Welcome to another episode of the Alpha Labs. Today we have another jitter test, um, but the main difference is, is that it's in our RF shield box. Inside is a uh, Volumio Primo, a streamer, and let me check if it's still on. But inside is a Volumio Primo. It's um, probed by an active probe, which is held by a third hand, and the big advantage of using the shield box is that uh, I don't have to touch the device anymore. I can just use this interface and plug, unplug cables, switch cables, switches, etc. Well, let me show you what it does. Um, I have a couple of measurements. Beneath you see we have a signal. Uh, it's a 100 megahertz clock inside the Volumio Primo. And if I take a baseline measurement, I can show you that uh, this is with a normal switch, with a sw uh, switch mode power supply, nothing special. And every time it's around 9.4, 9.7, 9.56, 9 whatever. 9.5-ish. And um, the low frequency modulation test is even more interesting because it shows where in the frequency spectrum there is uh, noise, timing noise, etc. So I will show you, it's around 45 seconds. It's not really accurate, but it's accurate enough. See, 0.75, 1.5, couple of spikes, but nothing major. Now this modified D-Link switch has an external OCXO clock. It's powered by an S booster, uh, but the switch itself is powered by the stock switch mode power supply. So I wanted to simulate what an audiophile 25 megahertz clock will do on a switch in terms of performance. And it's actually quite interesting because it does make a difference but it's not always positive. See, it's 4 PS now, so the low frequency modulation is higher than with a switch without an audiophile clock. Most people would think it will be better, but actually the external clock makes the low frequency modulation worse. And I see some extra spikes right here. And the jitter has increased to 10.7. So all in all, the external audiophile clock, which is not cheap, with an S-Booster power supply, makes the performance worse than a stock switch. That's an interesting uh, insight, I think. And will this make the sound better. I don't think it will make it better. I think it will make it different. But this test doesn't show that all switches with better clocks are worse than a stock switch. I just say that implementing or attaching an audio file clock to your switch will not make it better. Not always at least. In this case even this 25 megahertz VCXO also has the same impact. It, the low frequency modulation gets worse, the jitter increases, and the phase noise, which is linked to the low frequency modulation, will also be worse than without. Now, let's see if it lowers again, because you always have to check. And we're back at 9.7-ish, 9.5-ish. Yeah, that's the same as before. And let's see what the low frequency modulation test will do. And that's the big advantage of this RF shield box. I don't have to do measurements in bulk to get stable performance. I can just put it in there. I don't have to touch it anymore. It will always be the same. And that's a major difference with the previous setup. See, it's the same, it lowered again, and these two bumps are gone there, and it's around the same as before. Now, let's see what, uh, oh no, I can do it like this, what a filter 
will do. Now, I know already that the Jitter performance will be about the same, to be honest. But I can see a different pattern in the low frequency modulation. So it was around nine, uh, uh, 1.6 ish, the peak. And it had some noise here in the lower spectrum. And we're talking picoseconds. So it's not major noise, of course, but it does make a difference. And let's see what this does. See, it does lower the low frequency modulation noise. So a filter actually does improve the noise around here. Let's see how that relates to jitter. It was 9.5-ish to 9.7-ish. And now it's 9.3 average and accumulated one sigma is still 9.7 but it, this is lower the tail fit algorithm calculated lower jitter uh, than without it's 9.39 oh i just switched on a screen <laughs> and let's see if i plug it back if it will be the same and if that low frequency modulation increases again after this, then we have a sort of a validated test because you always have to check what you're actually measuring. Nine, ah, this increased to 10 a little bit, 9.5 ish. Yeah, it's higher again. Let's see if this increased back to where it was. Now, jitter always does a little bit fluctuate. It drifts, that's why it's called jitter. So it can go up and down a little, little, little bit, but it shouldn't increase by two picoseconds or more than that, because yeah, it's a little bit up again. It's broader than without. So this is not a validated test, but if I plug this in again, you will see filters are really hard but it does show a pattern if i plug this in again it should be spiked up again because of the external clock messing with the noise and that's a very very obvious pattern that uh, shows up it's really um, significant so to say see bam it's back at five even now so this should increase as well so this clock obviously interferes with the noise in the switch which obviously interferes with the clock in the streamer and that's why yeah 10.8 10.5 so that's a that's a big measurable difference in clocking performance in the volumio and it should be down but yeah well that that drops back to the normal values i hope you liked these measurements and well tests we do uh, i have showed you that a switch with an external clock doesn't perform better than a normal switch well in this case it didn't perform better and you have to be really really careful with uh, combining external clocks with your switch i mean i hope that producers of audiophile switches uh, do these tests as well because it's pretty obvious that an external clock can actually ruin the clock inside a streamer Well, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye